Hello and welcome to the Prussian Night review of Mattel's Jurassic World Dino Rivals. I want to say fearsome strike. Move the camera back and apologize for the uh, reflection and all the junk in my storage room. This is shot in my on my desk in my spare bedroom. But we have the Dino Rivals Mattel Fallen Kingdom Dilophosaurus. I believe this is fearsome strike. I can't remember its name. I've had this guy for a while, and the. I want to say newest, I'm not sure which one came out first, but the Dilophosaurus from Jurassic World as well. And first and foremost, we will take a look at this guy since I got him first. Now, right off the bat, this color scheme, if my autofocus would work here, and you can see my wonderful phone here that I'm recording on. This color scheme, if this guy had the more movie accurate color scheme with his gimmick, he would be my favorite. Now I do have the, I want to say either the first or second Dilophosaurus that they released for Fallen Kingdom. I do have that one but it's in storage so he's not in this review. One day when I get to him he will be. And I'm hoping I can do this review without my phone dying. Long story on that one. But anyways for the detailing you can see very, there are a lot of, and I apologize if you hear my cat or my ferret in the background. A lot of liberties taken with the color scheme. It's a very inaccurate color scheme. Probably not an accurate to the dinosaur, but inaccurate to the movie. And the one thing you're going to notice with this guy versus the other guy is the orange on his back. I mean, it's more of a red, but it comes off as a light orange. It ends on his tail and on his thighs, so there's that gap there. But, yeah. Getting closer here on the face, you can see. And I apologize for the bandage. I was doing metal work and got a cut. So. You can see lots of nice detailing on the crest and on the... Uh, the frill, that color scheme, which I don't know why there's yellow on here because it's the only splotch of yellow other than the eyes. And even the backside is detailed well. It looks kind of like there's a wash towards the center, but it's just the way the light comes off on camera. You can see the uh, he is splitting a little bit up here on top of the head, which my first Dilophosaurus, I don't know if it's just a common thing with these guys, is when you fold these back, this split on the head actually widens, so his head is actually splitting apart. When I find that figure and do the review on him, I'll show you that, but yeah, I'll leave these open for a second so you can look at the arms. Lots of nice detailing on the arms and the feet. The one thing I do miss about the Hasbro Jurassic Park toys is those guys, apart from articulation, were very, very amazingly detailed. You could set them on the shelf and they would just look amazing. You know, they had detailing on the bottom of the hands, the bottom of the feet, the underside, the belly. These guys, not so much. And for the price point of these guys, they're both about $9, a little bit more than $9 with tax, but still, amazing figures for the price. And his tail, the end of it looks, I'm not sure what's well coming out on camera, but some of the wrinkles, it looks like it's been chewed up, and the other one has better detailing on the wrinkles. Just making sure my camera's not, or my phone's not going to die in this review, and by touching it, I messed up my autofocus. And... Articulation wise, these can open and close. I do wish these would have been able to fold in a little bit neater. That's the one thing I don't like about these Dilophosaurus figures is these don't fold in any more than that. But for the price point, I'm not going to worry about it. Mouth can open and close. And when it's open, you can see there is detailing on the teeth. The mouth is painted in pink. The gap there is a little odd, but if you kind of angle it, it looks better. And you can see his hole in his mouth. We'll get into that in a second. Arms are on these hinge joints. If you ever had the new Ninja Turtles, you know how these work. They can move up and do a full 360. Now, these arms are really rubbery. Not as rubbery as the Velociraptors, but they're a little rubbery, which kind of makes it hard to, because you want to move them out, but the arm flexes. So if you grab them right here at the elbow, you can move it up. One thing I've noticed about these hips is they don't move out like the older ones did. But they are just on joints. And they do kind of lock into place. I'm not sure why you can hear that. But they'll move that far back. This far forward. This one will move that far forward. It doesn't move anymore. And that far back. And he does stand fairly well. And my autofocus is just all over the place. And I apologize for it. And his gimmick is, which I love this gimmick. If he would have had the mix of the next Dilophosaurus gimmick with his paint scheme, this would be my favorite Dilophosaurus in my collection. But he's got a, a rubber gut, so you put him in water, you know, fill it up like you would any toy from the 90s. 
and you squeeze it and it shoots out water. Now, that may seem kind of stupid and childish, you're thinking, oh, it only goes a few inches. This guy actually shoots about three, three and a half feet with the with the squirt gun gimmick, which I love that he's got that, that oomph to it. The only thing I do worry about is this stomach is made out of a really soft rubber. I do worry about this holding up over time, but the way it's designed is it actually doesn't stand out as bad, which I love this figure for it. You know, he's got decent articulation. Nothing like the Amber collection would have. Of course, that would be more high-end collectible. But for $9, if you're looking for a toy for a kid or a cheap Dilophosaurus, these are fairly, fairly decent. And yeah, now we're going to move on to the next guy who is not better par se, but more of my favorite. And this one, I don't know the name of it for the life of me, but you can see he's got more of a different stance. We'll get into that in a second. But you can see his paint, this comes off as a little bit of yellow but on camera, but actually it's all orange. And it does go down his body, but it does not co coerce, coerce, yes, that's the word. It does not continue onto his thighs, which I wish it did, because it does look a little weird. And it's even, giving a little bit of spoiler there on the gimmick, it's not on his neck all the way up, but it looks more natural. Now, detailing wise, he's pretty much the same. He's got almost the same stance to him. Just the body's a little bit different. So pretty much the same articulation. Legs can go that far back, that far forward. And they do actually have a stopping point. They do still click into place. This leg can go back that far, forward that far due to the shape of the body arms because of the viz gimmick it has the same articulation but they're really hard to get to now you're probably wondering well, what's his gimmick and why does he have this this stance one thing i do have to bring up though is if you notice third he looks like he's a little bit chunkier and he is but it's not noticeable you can have these guys by the on the shelf together and it's not like oh this one's really chunky and fat and looks out of proportion he looks bulkier and that's it he just looks a little bit bulkier which it's fine by me because it's diversity, but this gimmick, if you would have had this gimmick with the water squirting gimmick or even just a missile or whatever, just maybe a little green piece in his mouth, this guy would be my favorite Dilophosaurus of all time. Now his gimmick, you want to grab his tail and lift up on it and he opens his frill and opens his mouth. Which I know that's probably a stupid gimmick, but for nine bucks with his, my autofocus is like going crazy with him doing this because of the light reflecting off of it. But this is more of a movie accurate color scheme. And this, I know this guy can do it too, but you have to manually do it. And that that's all fine and dandy and all, but I mean, it just looks weird. Because when you're trying to do this, it'd be nice if, you know, because when he shot his poison, these opened up and sink with his mouth. And I know these are children's toys, but that just seems kind of boring that it doesn't do it on its own. Now this guy does it on his own, but he doesn't have any projectile or anything like that. And the first Dilophosaurus was like the other one, you had to manually open it. and But it came with an effect piece in his mouth. I wish this one came with that, or like the old Ripley, the old Kenner Ripley figure where the flames kind of stuck out of the uh, flamethrower. I cannot English today. I wish he had that with green, which would be cool, or maybe a uh, squirt gun gimmick where you just put him in water and then he squirts. That would be amazing. Now his stance reminds me a lot of the Hasbro Jurassic Park toys. If you've ever seen the third one, the Raptor, he had that weird stance to it. I mean, it looked amazing, but the stance and the gimmick was... worked perfectly. This guy has the same issues, so you can get him into some decent poses I guess and the gimmick is, is pretty easy to use when you've got him posed kind of um, so if you take him you can bend him up like that you know get to work so yeah between the two this guy also came with a trading card I don't know where it's at but between the two let me move my camera back so I can get him in the focus here between the two if you have to only pick up one I would say go with this guy. I have not seen this guy on a shelf for a while. I only got him a few months ago, but as soon as I find my other Dilophosaurus, I'll do a review of him. Probably do him with the uh, the blue Velociraptor with the battle damage. But for the most part, 
These are pretty cool for $9. I would like to get the Amber Collection, but with school and everything, that's a little out of my price range. And one thing to mention too, that before I forget, his face is a little bit bulkier and broader. He's got more of a lizard look than more of a snout. And while that might bug some people because it's not completely accurate, my chair just kind of, it's got a short limb, so every time I move just right, my chair rocks a little bit. It's a little hard to talk at the same time. But that might bug some people, but if you're going for more of a Dilophosaurus kind of army building, if you will, it's nice to have these because you say, oh, this one's smaller, it's a female, this one's a male, or vice versa. But this has been a Prussian Night review of the Jurassic, Jurassic World, I keep wanting to say Jurassic Park, Dino Rivals, Philo Velociraptor, yes, I know, I know about dinosaurs. Dino Rivals, Dilophosaurus, and Dilophosaurus. And like the video if you like the content, you know, give it a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe if you'd like to, and I will catch you folks next time. This has been a Prussian Night Review.